Welcome to this lecture titled Nearly Zero Energy Building Definition, European and Italian Regulation. Within this lecture, I'm going to present why building matters in Europe and why they are so important for reaching the climate neutral economy by 2050. Which are the regulation and which is the definition for the so-called nearly zero energy building at the European level? And finally, I will introduce the regulation, the definition, and the calculation methodology adopted in Italy since 2015. Why the building sector is so important for the decarbonization of our cities? According to several studies provided by the European Commission, the EU building stock is responsible for approximately 40% of final energy consumption and 36% of CO2 emission. This large amount of energy is due to the fact that the European building sector is very large, counting for approximately 25 million of multifamily houses and 92 million of single-family houses. Moreover, 75% of those buildings are completely inefficient, with a mean primary energy consumption ranging from 160 and 200 kilowatt hour square meter a year. It is clear that the building sector, being the largest single energy consumer in Europe, has big potential for energy efficiency gain, contributing largely to the European 2050 climate neutral goal. In this context, several European member states have established ambitious policies and targets for nearly zero energy buildings to become standard or commonplace. Analyzing the European standard, the Energy Performance of Building Directive has introduced in 2010 and then consolidated in 2018 with the Directive 844 the concept of nearly zero energy building. The Article 2 of the Directive number 31 defines a nearly zero energy building as a building that has a very high energy performance. The nearly zero or very low amount of energy required should be covered to a very significant extent by energy from renewable sources, including energy from renewable produced on-site or nearby. The Article 9 of the Energy Performance of Building Directive has introduced also two temporal targets, asking to the Member State to ensure that, first, by the end of 2018, new buildings occupied and owned by public authorities are nearly zero energy buildings. Second, by the 1st of January 2021, all new buildings are nearly zero energy. The European Commission asked also to the European Member States to draw up and submit nearly zero energy building national plan, describing how they intend to increase the number of nearly zero energy buildings in their respective country to comply with the directive. Considering the definition introduced by the Energy Performance of Building Directive, the nearly zero energy building concept can practically be represented by the scheme reported on the right side, showing the energy demand on the x-axis and the energy supply on the y-axis. The red point represents a reference building that might reflect the performance of a new construction built according to the minimum requirement of the National Building Code or the performance of an existing building before renovation. Starting from such reference case, the pathway to a nearly zero energy building is given by the balance of two action work. First, reduction of the energy demand by means of energy efficiency measure. This action allowed to move the red point to the green one on the x-axis. Second, generation of the electricity and energy carrier by means of energy supply option to get enough credits to achieve the energy balance. This action allowed to move the green point from the x-axis to the zero energy balance line. In most circumstances, major energy efficiency measures 
are needed as on-site energy generation options could be limited, especially in high-rise buildings. The nearly zero energy building concept introduced by the European Commission represents a broad definition. All the European member states have to detail and adapt their own laws to define the target and the calculation method in detail. In Italy, the energy performance of building directive has been transposed by the decree number 63 of 2013, converted in law number 19 in August 2013. The specific calculation method has been practically described by the ministerial decree published on June 2015 and call minimum requirement. In the same way, the Renewable Energy Source Directive number 28 of 2009 has been transposed in Italy in 2011 by the decree number 28. This decree lists a minimum requirement for renewable energy production to be applied in designing nearly zero energy buildings. Regarding the energy target, there is no explicit fixed threshold expressed in kilowatt hours per meter a year for being classified as a nearly zero energy building. In fact, the NZ is defined in Italy as a building characterized by higher performance than a reference building. The reference building is a building characterized by the same shape, location, orientation, function, windows wall ratio, as the actual real one with physical properties and performances as fixed by law. In detail, the Annex 1 of the Ministerial Order lists four requirements that the designer must have to verify during the nearly zero energy building design. The heat transfer coefficient per unit of envelope area expressing watt square meter Kelvin must be lower than the limit set by the law for the 2019 and 2021 target. Second, the ratio of the building summer solar surfaces represented by the windows to useful floor area must be lower than the reference value set for the 2019 and 2021 target. Third, the thermal energy for heating cooling and the global primary energy expressing kilowatt hours per meter a year must be lower than the reference value set for the 2019 and 2021 target. Fourth, the seasonal efficiency of the plant system for heating, domestic hot water production and for cooling must be higher than the limit set as a target for the 2019 and 2021. All the mentioned requirements must be contemporarily fulfilled. A very important aspect related to the nearly zero energy building design is the integration of renewable energy sources on the building side. The Annex 3 of the Decree number 28 of 2011 concerning the promotion of renewable energies describes the minimum mandatory amount of energy that must be provided by the exploitation of renewable sources. In particular, the decree asks for an integration of renewable energy technologies able to contemporarily fulfill three requests. The technical equipment must cover at least 50% of the expected primary energy for domestic hot water. The technical equipment must cover 50% of the sum of expected primary energy for domestic hot water, heating and cooling. Finally, the power of the electrical renewable energy system must be greater or equal to then calculating by applying the following formula. P equal to 1 over K times S, where S represents the area of the building at the ground level expressing square meter, and K is a factor that is equal to 50 square meter Kelvin Watt. For public building, the mentioned obligation must be increased by 10% considering the representative role of the public authorities. Considering the definition introduced by the Energy Performance of Building Directive, the nearly zero energy building concept can practically be represented by the scheme reporting on the right side, showing the energy demand on the x-axis 
and the energy supply on the y-axis. The red point represents a reference building that might reflect the performance of a new construction built according to the minimum requirement of the National Building Code or the performance of an existing building before renovation. Starting from such reference case, the pathway to a nearly zero energy building is given by the balance of two action work. First, reduction of the energy demand by means of energy efficiency measure. This action allowed to move the red point to the green one on the x-axis. Second, generation of the electricity and energy carrier by means of energy supply option to get enough credits to achieve the energy balance. This action allowed to move the green point from the x-axis to the zero energy balance line. In most circumstances, major energy efficiency measures are needed as on-site energy generation option could be limited, especially in high-rise buildings. Summarizing the concept introduced by this lecture, a nearly zero energy building is rich if the designer contemporary applied the most suitable technology for first, minimizing the energy needs by means of high energy efficient building envelope. Second, minimizing the use of non-renewable energy sources, prioritizing the use of electrical energy as main energy carrier. Third, maximizing the use of on-site renewable energy production for electrical and thermal energy, such as photovoltaics and solar thermal collector. Fourth, maximizing the plant system efficiency and the integration in the building envelope. Fifth, maximize the exploitation of the energy storage technologies such as battery or supercapacitor for load matching purpose. I really encourage the designer to apply this rule to all the new and renovated case studies that aim to reach the nearly zero energy building standard. That's all from my side and thank you for following the lecture.